<clears throat> so you have to get ready to replace him now, son. Who's good for another? Yes, ma'am. Are, are you together or have you met here? Together. No, we're together. We are together. together. Yes. Your name is? Tony. Sh Tony. Shuni. Tony. Tony, sir. Tony. Yeah. Tony. Yes. And Sally. 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 Yeah. Yes. Tony and Sally. Sally. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have come together? Yes, we yes. have. I see. Yeah. Now, what brought you here? Uh, well, we come to see you. <laughs> here. Now, today. I, I, mean. I know, but I mean, oh, oh, to see you. what happened? How did it happen? Well, um, did you, uh, did you did read any of my book? Had oh, I did, yes. We, I, I, well, I first... Um, what part of the world are you from? England. I should have known. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> from the very first sentence you said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have known. Yeah. Well, but I, I first heard uh, Wayne Nickerman. Ah, I see. And uh, he, he, he spoke about you. Yeah. And that's the first time I heard your name being right. spoken. And yeah. uh, since then I've come across other people who've... How, how long have you been interested in what we talk about? Um, ma me, many years. Many years? Yes, yes. yes the same, and about seven years. Right. Many years, ever since you were a child, do you think? <coughs> There's some, yeah. some yes. sort of a curiosity about something yes, that other yes. children didn't have. That's yes, right. Yeah. 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 And I, 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 you know, we, at the present time we have a, uh, we do have a guru called Satyananda. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. You have a guru? Yeah, called Satyananda. Have you ever heard of him? Satyananda is such a common name. Uh, there will be at least 20 Satyananda. Yes, I see. Gurus. Yes. Uh, Yes. He, he's in England? Yes, he's in England. He's, I see, he's I from see. Uruguay. Oh, I see, I yeah. see. Yeah. He's from Uruguay? Yes. His name is uh, Indian. Uh, he has he, he's not an Indian from Uruguay? N no, no. He's an Uruguayan? Yes. Yeah. I see. Yes. And talks about Advaita? Yes. Yes. I see. So now, mainly, what are you looking for? What are you looking for mm -hmm. in this life? That's my yes. point. That's what well, I'm interested uh, in. Mm -hmm. What do you want mm -hmm. as happiness in this life? Well, I suppose. The source to stay with, to be connected to the source. I'm, I'm sorry? To be connected to the source. To, to, be, feel to be connected to the source. To feel. Mm -hmm. Well, the point is, mm -hmm. you are connected to the source. But the trouble is, what you do and think you do, you get yourself disconnected from the soul. Yes. <laughs> That's the trouble. Exactly. <laughs> you don't want to get connected no. to the soul. You are already connected to the soul. Yes. yes. So do you, have, do you have any special question that you would like to ask? Or well, uh, <clears throat> I, I think I would like to ask a question about desire. Yes, go ahead. Um, in our society, we have a lot, uh, especially to do with sexual desire. Yes. And it's something that uh, it almost like feels like it's the real purpose in life. And uh, as we grow older, it seems to change in some way. Yes. And. Uh, at some stages, I feel like as if I've missed out on something, you know. Yeah, but, but we do know that sexual desire is not the same in all people. It varies a lot. Varies a lot. On what basis does it vary? On what basis does it vary? Does it vary from one individual ego to another individual ego? On one body mind organism to another body mind organism. 
which one body mind organism to another then you had no choice about this body mind organism which you call yourself therefore every body mind organism has certain genes and condition condition oh which you had i had no control over being born to particular parents they were had no control over the genes in this object and as you know more and more research being done bringing out an enormous new information about how powerful the genes are who who and i think whatever one does 90% is genes and 10% is conditioning who conditioning with what the individual ego has seen heard smelled what about it <coughs> by but 90% of it is genes over which nobody had any control who and therefore every body mind organism has certain preferences preferences based on genes who how much sensitivity there is who some people are more sensitive than others yeah mm-hmm. i don't know whether you watch the obama thing yesterday on the tv well we, we, we not yesterday but we did watch it before and the- in that there are several things where reverend jesse jackson jackson yes he was weeping Yes, I see that. Yes, yes. And he didn't and he didn't even bother to wipe his eyes. No. <laughs> no. You see? Yes. Well, I mean, to a certain extent. Yes. So, that is what I call sensitivity. Yeah. How sensitive one is, no one had any control. Mm. Sensitivity, similarly, sensuality. Mm. How much sensuality there is in in, in both body form? Mm-hmm. and sensuality could include even homosexuality mm-hmm. so if there is homosexuality as part of the sexuality in a body mind organism mm-hmm. the ego didn't choose it mm-hmm. therefore what i'm saying is the homosexual didn't choose to be homosexual so uh, Mm. the psychopath didn't choose to be a psychopath mm. Mm. the saint didn't choose to be a saint mm. mm-hmm. and the doctor didn't choose to be a doctor either mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you probably think they did i'm sorry <laughs> they usually think they do they do they, they, they think they do mm. i about the doctor i tell you mm. i have a nephew who is a doctor who mm. specializes in in children Mm. When he was three and a half years old, he used to get up early, I used to get up early, we used to sit in this chair. Mm. And I would say some old slokas and he would learn them by heart. Mm. Once we talked about doctors, so he said, when I grow up, I want to be a doctor. Mm. Three and a half, four years old man. So why do you want to be a doctor? Mm. because doctors make a lot of money he said no 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 three and a half years old no i want to cure people hmm maybe because they make a lot of money no no mm. i want to cure people <laughs> see what i mean yeah. he was a born doctor <laughs> and today any time of the night if there is a call he will pump the call mm. he doesn't switch off his mobile during the night Yes. I mean a genuine born doctor. Amazing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my point is mm-hmm. we praise a, doc- a doctor like my nephew mm-hmm. and we hate a homosexual man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Neither of them chose to be what they are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See what I mean? Yes, yes. Therefore, my whole point is, whatever we are, whatever we do, mm-hmm. 
én ne lepedj, hanem a csaj. Személyzem. Considering that, what is your understanding now about what life is? So first, what are, what are you looking for as happiness? This is the one word is happiness. But some, what are you looking for happiness? Sometimes it, it seems I'm looking for to be relieved of the, of the world, you know, you know, relieved of the, um, of some kind of agitation that's, that there is with life. To be at ease with to be at, Ah, yes. Yes, to be at ease. Yeah. In other words, whatever happens in life, yeah. you, 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 nobody has any control over it. So whatever happens in life, you want to be at ease. Yes. I entirely accept that. Yeah. And that is what I call happiness. Yeah. To be at ease with what happens. So if that is what you want, yeah. How do you think you are going to get it? What does one have to do to get that happiness, which is be at, what word did you say? Be at, be at ease. To be at ease? Yes. To be at ease? Yes. Why are you not at ease now? <laughs> I want to be at ease. Yes. You see what happened was, I was a traditional Hindu seeker. Yes. I was told to send to a guru. I had two gurus. Yes. The first guru I had was not in Bombay, in, in Pune. Pune. And I had, I had my relationship with him was over 20 years. Yes. But he was a traditional Hindu guru. Yes. And his aim was not, not enlightenment, yes, yes. but to, to deify his guru. That was his aim, to deify his guru. Yes. So I, I was able to help him a lot in building a, what he wanted was to build a, a fairly big uh, house. Yeah. Where people could come and stay with him. Yeah. I mean, not a hotel. Stay with him yeah. and get, give whatever donation they want to give. Yeah. But he wanted to build up for his, in the name of his guru. Mm. Mm. So I had worked for him for twenty years. Yeah. And my basic two questions have always been: What am I supposed to get? I was so enlightenment, self-realization, yes. being one with God. Mm. <clears throat> so my first question is, my, what is it that I'm supposed to get by enlightenment? What is enlightenment? And more important, what will enlightenment do for me yes. as happiness that I didn't have before? Mm. No one, no one could give me an answer to that. So I was frustrated. Mind you, I was very busy at the, at the office. I worked in a bank for 37 years. Mm -hmm. So not that I was an active seeker, mm -hmm. but still as a passive seeker, I was frustrated because no one could give me the answer to these two basic questions. Mm -hmm. And I had those two basic questions probably because I was a practical banker. Mm -hmm. If I'm supposed to be enlightened, what do I expect from it? Mm -hmm. No one would give me that answer. Mm -hmm. So after I retired <coughs> at the age of 60, mm -hmm. <coughs> I decided I'm true with enlightenment. Mm -hmm. I'm true with God, heaven, hell. Mm -hmm. From now on, for the remaining number of years, God knows how many, mm -hmm. I shall try for only one thing. I shall pursue happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I asked myself, isn't it totally selfish? What about those millions of people below the poverty line? Yes. Yeah. The answer was, I didn't create those millions before the poverty line. Mm -hmm. Below the poverty line, God created them. And God does look after them the way 
he's, he's supposed to do that. Mm. So I'm not concerned with it, but I am concerned. Mm. When the car stops at the traffic signal and the beggar comes, then it's a different story. Then I am concerned with that. Mm. Yeah. So there, uh, whether I give something to him or not, is mine. That's not God, that, that I'm concerned. Yeah. But more than what I'm saying is, I wanted happiness for myself. Hmm. So what I'm telling you now is not what Advaita in theory is, hmm. not what some my guru told me and what his guru told him and his guru told him. Hmm. That's what usually happens in India. Hmm. Hmm. They're more concerned with their lineage hmm. than with the truth. Yeah. They're more concerned with their lineage. Yes. That's another thing I found. Hmm. So I said, I'm going to pursue happiness. Hmm. <laughs> you see? Yeah. And the very first problem I had was, I know what, by God's grace, for which I'm eternally grateful, hmm. I've always been reasonably comfortable in life. Yeah. For which I'm eternally grateful to God. The millions of people below the poverty line, but yeah. I've been reasonably comfortable in life. Yeah. But God's grace also, I've never been too greedy. Mm. 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 In other words, I've not enjoyed all the pleasures in life. Mm. But I, I have enjoyed pleasures in life. And mm. I know what pleasure is. Mm. And still, mm. after 60 years, I'm looking, I'm trying to get, find happiness. <laughs> yeah. Even if I had enjoyed all the pleasures in life, I would still be looking for happiness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the most important conclusion I came to, mm -hmm. most important conclusion I came to, the happiness I'm seeking mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the pleasures in life. Because I know what pleasure, and I'm still mm. seeking happiness. Yes, yes, yeah. Most important. Mm. Mm. So I came to the conclusion that the happiness I want is not to be found in pleasure, but not even to be found in what happens in life. <laughs> you see how important it, it, yeah. it is for me. Yeah. Most important conclusion, the basis of my search for happiness. The happiness I want, the happiness I'm seeking, mm. is not to be found in what happens in life. In any case, what happens in life is not in my control. Mm. Mm. And, happy, and what happens in life is, no one has any control over whether the next moment will bring pleasure or pain. Mm. We have to accept it, that's the, that's the rule of the game. Yes, sir. Mm. But if there's pleasure I enjoy, if there's pain, I have to suffer it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the happiness I'm seeking is not to be found in the flow of life. Whatever happens in life, I can still have the happiness I'm seeking. Because the happiness I want is not to be found in what happens in life. Mm -hmm. What happens in life is sometimes nice, sometimes not so nice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes glorious weather for, for a month. Mm -hmm. Sometimes an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. So my question therefore was, if happiness, my happiness does not depend on what happens in life, mm -hmm. on what could it depend? Mm -hmm. very, my very start. And the answer was fairly clear to me. If it is not to be found in what happens in life, it must depend on my attitude to what happens in life. See what I mean? Mm. Mm. That is a nice, good step, firm step to proceed. Mm. Next word, much more difficult. What do I mean by my attitude to life? Mm. Attitude to life is a sort of philosophical phrase, with the philosophy of love. Mm. Mm. But at the ground level, at the level that I want to find happiness, mm. what does my attitude to life mean? Mm. 
Does it mean my attitude to those below the poverty line, my attitude towards the saints, mm. my attitude towards the murderers, my attitude towards the, towards the psychopaths, mm. my attitude towards the homosexuals? Mm. What, is, what do I mean by my attitude to life, on which depends my mm. happiness? Mm. That was a very tough thing. It took me a long time, a <laughs> lot of misery. Any answer that I got I had to throw out as being totally inadequate. Mm. Until I came to the answer, my attitude to life at ground level, at, at the most practical level, means only my attitude towards the other. The basis of daily living is me and the other. Mm. The basis of life is me and the other. Yeah. The other may be my parent, mm. a wife or son or a close relative or a neighbor mm. or someone connected with my business or occupation mm. or a total stranger. Mm. In other words, my happiness depends on my attitude towards the other, whoever the other is, mm. the closest relative or the farthest stranger. Mm. And I don't have the happiness now because my attitude towards someone close and some of totally different, is very totally mm. different. Mm. Mm. Therefore I'm not happy. Mm. Therefore my happiness depends on a sing, sing, single, single relationship, whoever the other is. That's the conclusion I came to. Mm. See what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you this from personal. Mm. Therefore, mm. you're not likely to find this in a book. Therefore, I wrote a book. <laughs> I wish there must be 30 or over more books. Mm. But every single book, I never wrote at the sat at the table and they, I write this book. Every book has been triggered by some happening. Mm. So here, my, the, the book is, Pursue happiness and get enlightened. Hmm. Hmm. Most of the masters will turn in their grave. Hmm. Hmm. Pursue happiness and get enlightened. Hmm. What have you been told? You have to pursue enlightenment, yes, sir, sir. which is a very difficult task. Yes, sir. You, have, you have to do a lot of hard things. Hmm. Hmm. You have to be a good boy, mm. yeah. not, not spoil yourself too much. Yeah, yeah. If you have a little more than you need, give it to the others. Mm. Mm. Yes, In other words, you, see, you have to pursue hard work. Mm. Yeah. You have to pursue hard work and get enlightenment and thereafter, the happiness, which I have never told what it is. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. mm. so mm. I said, what has been my attitude towards the other so far, mm. which has not brought me this happiness? Mm. I came to the conclusion, my happiness depends my attitude towards the other. Mm. So far it differs. But if I were to find out one attitude towards the other, whoever the other is, hmm. what has been my attitude towards the other, which has not brought me the happiness. Hmm. Once I know that, it's easy to, at least to know that I have to change it. Yes. What do you think, sir? What do you think, you are? I'm sorry, you said your name is? Tony. Tony. T Tony. But uh, I used to think that pleasure was happiness. I'm sorry? I said I used to think that pleasure was happiness. No, no, what I mean is, what would you say is, has, is, is your attitude towards the other now? Oh, what's my attitude? Uh, your attitude towards the other, whoever the other is. Well, it, yes, it varies. Yeah. Whoever the other is. Yeah. If you are honest, there can be only one, one answer.
Well, it's really, it's, you know, it's not... That is the point. It, we have accepted. It must not really. Mm. What is your attitude towards the other? Only one attitude. If you were to look from among your being attitude, yeah. what is the one attitude? I would say it's difficult sometimes. Uh, it's not... Is there one attitude? I mean, I don't feel I have one attitude. But if you are honest, you will know that you do have one attitude. <laughs> <laughs> if you are honest, you will find that you have only one attitude. One attitude. And that is your personal welfare. <coughs> mm. Me and the other. Me and the other, yeah. My attitude towards the other. Mm. My attitude towards the other depends on my welfare. Mm. Whoever the other is, I want my welfare. Yes, yes. See what I mean? Yes. The other may be my brother or a total stranger. Mm. How many reports do we not find as soon as you open the paper? Mm. Father has killed the son, a brother has killed the brother, mm. a friend has killed another friend. Yeah. <coughs> dispute over money or love or whatever. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So therefore, I think the conclusion. My attitude towards the other, whether I like it or not, to be honest, is based on suspicion, fear and rivalry. Mm. Mm. If me and the other want the same thing, Mm. I would do everything possible mm. that I get it and not him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said if you are honest, you will have only one. Mm. Mm. It is suspicion. Mm. 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 Suspicion, fear and rival. Mm. Mm. So therefore, if I want happiness, mm. my attitude to the other, to the other has to be has to change mm. totally. Mm. Mm. It has to be changed from suspicion, fear, and rivalry mm. to a totally harmonious attitude. Mm. Mm. Isn't that bad? Mm. Simple. Mm. So if you had come to this conclusion, what would you have done? I'm still speaking, I'm doing my own journey. Mm. If you were on your own journey pursuing happiness mm. for yourself, mm. and you had come to the conclusion mm. that the only way you can have your happiness is to have a harmonious attitude towards the other, whoever the other is. Mm. If that is the conclusion you had come to, mm. How would you have proceeded? I would have found that very difficult. I'm talking to him, but please, you have to answer. If you see yourself as being the same as everything, then you wouldn't make the separation of different judgments. Yes, and therefore? And therefore? And therefore, what would you do? And what I'm saying, having come to this conclusion, what would you do? Mm. What would you do to change it? Mm. What would you do in order to change a totally disharmonious mm. relationship into a totally harmonious relationship? Mm. Well, uh, the, way, the way I see it is, I mean, it's easy to be harmonious when everything's okay. <laughs> But when somebody is difficult or maybe... Uh, In other words, what you are saying is, it is not possible to have a totally harmonious attitude towards everyone. Yes. <laughs> Isn't, that that? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that the conclusion? Yeah. I came to the same conclusion. And therefore, what did I decide to do? I said, it's stupid to find, try to find happiness in life. <laughs> And that is why God has made life so difficult. Mm -hmm. 
the basis of the The basis of daily living <coughs> is uncertainty. I don't know what the next moment will be, pleasure or pain. I don't know the total amount of pleasure and pain I'm supposed to experience in this life. Yes. I don't know whether I'll be alive tomorrow. That's right, yeah. The whole basis of life is uncertainty. Mm. 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 And therefore, I came to the conclusion. God, the Creator, the Soul, mm. does not want me to be happy. <laughs> Therefore, it's pure time, base of time, mm. to see happiness in this life. Mm. Only thing to do is accept what happens mm. as something over which I have no control. Mm. It's according to the will of God or cosmic law, mm. whichever way I look at it. Mm. But something not in anyone's control. Mm. And the only thing to do in, in life is to continue to live, accepting the pleasure and enjoying the pleasure, or suffering the pain. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and give up the stupid idea of finding happiness. <laughs> The only way to happy to be happy is to give up these stupid ideas of having happiness. Mm. Mm. And I came to this conclusion, not with frankly, not with any resentment. That is the rule of life, that's how it is. Mm. Mm. So not with any resentment mm. towards God, mm. total humility. Mm. Mm. And maybe because of that, and my, my destiny, mm. I, had a, I had an answer from outside. I had an answer from outside. Then I remembered, <coughs> 40, 50 years ago, mm. I remember reading Albert Einstein, the famous scientist, mm. saying that the, he did not discover the equation for the theory of relativity, E is equal to mc square. He say, his words were like distinctly enough. The equation came to me from outside. Mm. So at that time I wondered, what is this outside? Mm. What is this outside? Mm. But when I got the answer, I knew where the outside was. The outside was only source of God, or energy, or consciousness, whatever we call it. Mm. The unmanifest singularity, mm. the source, mm. God generally knows. Mm. The answer was specific, shook me, stunned me. Mm. The answer was, you're wrong. My idea has never been for the human being to be unhappy. On the contrary, according to my plan, to be happy, in every human being's birthright. But it is based on only one factor. It is based on only one factor, which the human being is not prepared to accept. That is why he is unhappy. Then suddenly he added, and it's a cruel joke, that this, that this one single basis of happiness is the basis of every religion, in what Thomas close. Precisely this. Mm. Earlier I had thought about the matter and came to the conclusion that there simply cannot be one single basis for every religion. Mm. If there were, we wouldn't have had religious wars for thousands of years. Mm. Mm. But now the answer comes from God. There is a single basis for every religion. And yet, the human being is unhappy because that one factor has not been accepted. So what is the basis of every religion? That was my next, <laughs> my always led. Mm. So the direction was very clear. There mm. was no direction. Mm. So, then I got my direction. I have to find out what is the basis of every religion. 
And then I came across four beautiful words from the Bible, two, which I had earlier come across, God knows how many times, two hundred times, three hundred times, but it had never reached my heart. <laughs> Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Such a simple thing. Nothing can happen unless it is the will of God. And I added, or the cosmic law, a law which concerns the entire universe for all time, something so vast and complex, is beyond the human brain. I cannot know the basis of the cosmic law, but everything happens according to the cosmic law, God's will. That I should be able to accept. Then Islam says the same thing. <coughs> I'm told exactly the same thing. The Hindu religion says the same thing in a more powerful way. The Hindu religion says, Thou art the doer and Thou art the experiencer. <laughs> now what happens? I'm in pain. God, why do you choose me for pain and Him for pleasure? But everything happens according to the will of God. And then, thou art the doer, thou art the experience. And more important, thou art the speaker and thou art the listener. It's so simple. You may speak and Tony listen. Tony speaks, Ramesh listen. So simple. But in both Tony and Ramesh, we are in deep sleep or sedated into unconsciousness. Neither of us will be able to speak or listen or do anything. <laughs> Therefore, nothing can happen unless it is supposed to happen according to the will of the will of God. Will of God. So the same, that is the basis of every religion. Mm. Nothing can happen unless it is the will of God. Mm. And it's rather funny, that's why I'll tell you. There used to be a young lady and her boyfriend. Mm. They were here for quite some time. They were. And the, the young ladies, parents were on, were to go on on, on a world holiday. Mm. So I suggest, she suggested to the father, why not come here and spend a week with me? Mm. <coughs> mm. Good idea. So they came. And she brought them here. They were hard Catholics. <laughs> hard tight Catholics. Mm. And what I said must have made the man really angry. Really angry. So, and I'm told there's a club here, Breach Candy. Breach Candy, swimming bar, bath club. And, and what used to happen is from here, many people would go there, especially the foreigners. And I'm told every morning, every morning, mm. they were here for a week. Mm. <coughs> a group of four, five, six people would get together and try to convert him. Mm. Totally without success. Mm. But the, the, the mother somehow was able to get the message through to her heart. Mm. So this Jennifer, he told me, look, my mother wants to see you alone. Mm. <laughs> so I said, okay, bring her along. Three mm. o'clock in the afternoon. So they came here. Mm. And we talked. And, and she, by the time she, they left, mm. she had accepted it totally. Mm. But he hadn't. So what he did was when he went back, he sent her a book. The Will of God. Mm. The Will of God, written by a top 
man in, in the hierarchy, Catholic hierarchy. Mm. Quite high in the hierarchy. Mm. The title of the book was The Will of God. Mm. And right across the front page, 650,000 copies sold. Mm. So 650,000 copies sold, mm. at least 200,000 people must have read it. Mm. Mm. And why should they have read it? Because they needed it. <laughs> the will of God, for me, doesn't need any, any interpretation. Mm. So the book begins with that. That's what you think. Mm. But it needs interpretation. Mm. And I'm the one. <laughs> I mean, he didn't say that. I know. Mm. I'm the one who will explain it. Mm. So he says, will of God has to be understood mm. very deeply. Mm. It's not as simple as it looks. Mm. Therefore, the will of God has to be understood mm. in three phases. The intentional will of God. Mm. Two, the circumstantial will of God. Mm. And three, the ultimate will of God. Mm. So he took the case of Adolf Hitler. He said, it was not the intentional will of God that the hell of Hitler should have been born. Mm -hmm. That means, hell of Hitler was born against God's will. Mm -hmm. Then, so, hell of Hitler was born because of the circumstantial will of God. Mm -hmm. It means, obviously, God has no control over his circumstantial will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the ultimate will of God prevailed when the Nazis were defeated and Hitler shot himself. <laughs> that was the interpretation. That means God is not all that powerful that we are told He is. <laughs> so the point I'm making is Mm. That nothing can happen unless it is God's will. Mm. So to pursue with my my pursuit of happiness, mm. I came to the conclusion that the basis of every religion is thy will be done. Mm. Nothing can happen unless it is the will of God. Mm. <coughs> and at that point of time it suddenly struck me. But that is what enlightenment means, which nobody was able to tell me. Mm. Mm. At that time it struck me, this is, this is enlightenment. Mm. To be able to accept totally, mm. nothing can happen unless it is the will of God, according to the cosmic law. Mm. Mm. How it affects whom? It helps you and hurts me or helps me and hurts her mm. is again according to the will of God or cosmic law. Mm. Through which three-dimensional object, through which person the happening happens, mm. with the society called your action, my action, her action, his action, mm. is also according to God's will, cosmic law. The human being is incapable of doing any deed. I said, for me that is enlightenment. And that time it struck me also why nobody was able to tell me what enlightenment is. Mm. Nobody was able to tell me what enlightenment is because the enlightenment has never ever been a certified event. Mm. Mm. You are a doctor? Yes, you are a certified doctor, mm. certified accountant, certified lawyer, mm. but no certified sage, no. no certified enlightened person. Therefore, I came to a conclusion, enlightenment means one's own, one's own concept. Mm. According to my concept, I'm enlightened. And what does enlightenment mean? Happiness. <laughs> Happiness. Later on I came to know that the two questions and two answers were given by the Buddha, not from any, any 
context, mm. but from his own experience. Mm. But as I came across the Buddha's words were, what is enlightenment? In his own words, he said exactly what I said. Events happen, deeds are done, consequences happen, but there is no individual doer of any deed. Total acceptance of this is enlightenment. And then what does enlightenment mean? What does it do? He, he was very accurate. He didn't say enlightenment means special bliss. He did not say enlightenment means ananda, as the Indian word says. He says enlightenment means the end of suffering. Enlightenment means the end of suffering. And I, by that time I knew exactly what the suffering that had ended. Earlier, when I thought I was the doer of my action, I carried a load of pride for some actions, guilt and shame for other actions. I carried a much bigger load of hatred for others, for their actions. And this is the suffering which ended in a minute, immediately ended. The moment I accepted, no one is capable of doing anything. Everything that happens is happening according to God's will, cosmic law. Therefore, I can't hurt anyone. No one can hurt me. Therefore, no need for me to carry a load of guilt and shame. No need for me to have a load of hatred for others. That is the suffering which ends. And the absence of that suffering means the presence of happiness as we know it. Which is, I agree with you totally, I am never uncomfortable with myself. I am always at ease with myself. That's what you said. Yeah. I entirely agree. I am, I can be never ill. I can be always at ease with myself. Never uncomfortable with myself. Only when I am able to accept the situation mm. as it is, without condemning anyone for anything, neither myself nor the other. <laughs> so after that, what happened? What happened was, I kept that, my concept to myself, my second guru, Nisargadatta, mm -hmm. on his deathbed, mm -hmm. when he was so weak, he, he could hardly serve his attendant. Mm -hmm. That was the day before he died. His attendant has to put his ear close to if he wanted a glass of water or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. From that moment of weakness, he suddenly got up on his arm and shouted at me in his usual way. Why don't you talk? I took those as orders from my guru to talk. Earlier what had happened was, there was an incident where he had told me, yeah, a group of people had come and he wanted to go to the evening to the toilet or something. For the first time anybody heard him say, he said, I'll be back in five minutes. In the meantime, don't stop talking. Talk, ask your questions. And he pointed at me and said, he will answer them. Everybody was stunned. No, he hadn't given that power to anybody. But when he went down, he said, nobody asked any questions. There were no, no answers. So when he came back, he was very angry. But he knew that in spite of his giving me permission to talk to, I took it as permission to talk to those people mm. and not anybody else. Mm. So I never talked. So now he said, why don't you talk? Mm. But when I, my, what I had to talk was such a stupid concept, I didn't dare. Mm. Mm. So I kept it to myself and kept my happiness to myself. <laughs> But I knew that I was enlightened, hmm. according to my conscience. Hmm. 
Yes. Yes. So now what happened? If I tell somebody else me, I'm told you are enlightened. I say, yes, I'm enlightened according to my concept. Yes. Oh, so I'm, I'm asked. Yes. Oh, you are enlightened, are you? Yes. Do you still feel physical pain? Yes. I said, yes. yes. Do you still feel grief? Yes. I said, yes. Hmm. Do you know what goes on anywhere in the world? I hmm. said, no. <laughs> Do you have any special powers to heal my bad illness? I said, no. Hmm. Then how can you be enlightened? Hmm. <laughs> so that told me hmm. what concept the average seeker has hmm. about enlightenment. Hmm. Especially the Indian seeker. He believes that when he is enlightened, mm. he has become God. Mm. <laughs> he will want nothing. <laughs> In fact, if he wants something, it will be already there. Mm. 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 That is the idea which the, the Indian average seeker still has. Mm. Enlightenment means after enlightenment, I'll be God. I'll be mm. as, meaning I'll be as powerful as God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. If I were driving a car and went in a busy traffic and I wanted to park it, no parking space, mm. I won't have to go around four or five times. Mm. Somebody will get out from his train, not knowing why, Make room for me and I'll, I'll park my car there. That's what enlightenment will do for me. <laughs> See what happened? But I didn't, I didn't dare talk. Hmm. But I, I, it kept coming to me. Hmm. My guru had ordered me to talk. Hmm. Hmm. But he hadn't ordered me to advertise that I'm going to talk. <laughs> So I decided I would talk only if somebody wants to hear something. Oh. And then, one morning, about seven o'clock, a young Italian and uh, 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 yeah. Australian. 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 A young Australian. A young Australian uh, student of medicine. Hmm. He was living for a year in a in a ashram close by. Hmm. Close by, about two hours away from here. Hmm. So one morning he came hmm. at seven o'clock here. He pressed the bell. I went and he said, I brought him in. Hmm. And he said he from the ashram. He's here for a week. He's going back next week. Hmm. And he wanted to see me. Hmm. So my wife knew to be here at seven o'clock, he must have left his place at five o'clock. He couldn't have had anything to eat. So she went in and brought him some breakfast for which he was very grateful. And we talked for about an hour or hour and a half. Then he said, can I come again? I said, sure. He said, can I come tomorrow? I said, yes. Next day he came and from the station he telephoned. And he said, look, I have three or four friends with me. Hmm. Do you mind if I've been? I said, no, but they're welcome. Hmm. So a week later he left and the four or five became forty or fifty, hmm. which is still happening. So I still keep talking. Hmm. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> and what I do is, I found most advertisements. So and so Swami, this, that and that, the Swami, Sarvodayananda, whatever, hmm. giving a talk on chapter 13 of the Bhagavad Gita, hmm. from such and such a day to such and such a day, hmm. at such and such a place. Hmm. All are welcome. Hmm. All are welcome, but everybody there, there used to be a box hmm. for donation. Hmm. Hmm. So I didn't do that. I didn't do that. And here, nobody is invited. Everybody is welcome. 
Everybody is welcome to come when they want to, they are free to go when they want to. <laughs> so that's what I, and what I do is, I don't give a lecture, I don't give a... You know, you know Jay Krishnamurti? Yes. Have you heard of Jay Have you read his yeah. book? Yes. The wonderful writer. Yes, sir. So I'm told, when I went, went to the three or four talks in, in Bombay, Hmm. People could ask questions, <laughs> but at some point he got so tired of answering questions, hmm. he said, no more questions, I speak, you listen, at the end of it I go and you go. <laughs> 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 but where I said, I am concerned, I try one question. Hmm. Hmm. In fact, I say, I challenge you to ask me a question which I am not able to answer. Hmm. <laughs> Why? Because I've asked that question my, to myself mm. on my journey, journey towards enlightenment, mm. journey towards happiness. Mm. Mm. So any question that I have. You want to ask mm. I, I didn't come really with a question already in my form, but what you're saying about not being the doer, yeah. that feels really important to hear that, right? Yes, but, because but important, but easy to accept? Yes. Easy to accept? Not, not easy, no. <laughs> no, no not easy. <laughs> no. Why, why is it not easy to accept? <coughs> why is it not easy to accept? Because... I agree that it is extraordinarily difficult to accept. Yeah. Because the sense of doership... Yeah has been so deeply ingrained yes. in every human being. Yes. Mm. What is daily living? Dealing with a situation. Yes. Mm. And dealing with a situation means in any situation I decide what I want. Mm -hmm. I decide my various alternatives I have to do what I can. Mm. I choose mm. what I have to do. Mm -hmm. And I do it. Mm -hmm. I do it. Mm -hmm. It's so deeply ingrained. Mm -hmm. How can I explain now that, that I'm not the doer? Mm -hmm. And then another curious thing happened. My brother next door, mm -hmm. he has a granddaughter. She now was eight. This was when she was three and a half years old. Mm -hmm. Extremely talented girl. Mm -hmm. Very creative. So the usual thing was during the day she would do something, write a poem or draw a, draw a, a drawing or cut something into mm -hmm. And next morning he would come to us so, and, and was very happy to be admired. One morning she came with a drawing, which is really well done. So I was, I was very happy. Mm -hmm. I told her how nice it was, how good it is. Mm -hmm and how talented she is, and she was happy. <coughs> my wife was in the bathroom, mm. so she wanted my wife to see too. Mm. So she said, where is Grandma? Mm. So I said, Grandma, my words were, my Grandma has been in the bathroom for quite some time, mm. and she shouldn't be out any moment. Mm. And this three and a half year old child asked me, until then, what shall I do? Mm. <laughs> Three and a half year old kid, mm -hmm. until the next moment, what shall I do? <laughs> then it struck me how deeply ingrained the sense of doership. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not easy to accept mm -hmm. that I'm not the doer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, the, and that is where I, I, I differ mm. so basically mm. from what many masters have said. Mm -hmm. mm. Most masters, have they not told you mm. Mm. that enlightenment means end of separation? Yes. Mm. Have they not told you? Mm. Mm. Enlightenment means the end of the ego. Mm. Yes, yes. Isn't that right? Yes. And I simply could not accept it <coughs> for one reason. Ramana Maharshi lived for fifty years mm. 
after the total sudden enlightenment at the age of eighteen or so. Mm. And he lived for fifty years as Ramana Maharshi mm. or Bhagwan mm. or whatever Swami, whatever mm. he was known as. <laughs> and if somebody called him by name, he would respond. Mm. 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 See, if a sage, totally enlightened sage, responds to his name being called, quite clear that the ego, identification with a particular name and form as a separate entity must exist. Mm. 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 See what I mean? Therefore, I, co- I, I, could not, I couldn't accept mm. Mm. that enlightenment means the end of separation, end of the ego. Mm. 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 Now, with my, with my concept of enlightenment, mm. it means, enlightenment means when the ego is able to accept totally mm. that he is, an, he is a helpless robot mm. through which things happen according to God's will, cosmic law. Mm. He is incapable of doing any deed. Therefore now, people ask me, if you say the ego still exists, then where is the enlightenment? My answer is very simple. In the case of the enlightened ego, in the case of the enlightened ego, the sense of personal doership has been totally removed. So the sage continues to live his life as the same separate entity, but with the total acceptance that the most complicated deed or the simplest deed that happens through his body, my dog, mm. is not his deed. It's a happening according to God's will, according to cosmic law. Mm. Mm. So if that sense of doership is totally destroyed, mm. that is enlightenment. Mm. That is my concept. Mm. 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 Makes, a, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Mm. So, mm. now this talk is recorded and you can get a copy, mm-hmm. let me, let you can buy a copy, Yes. DVD here, CD here. Yes. So if any questions arise during the day, you are welcome to come again okay. and we'll deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice, thank you very much. Yes. And if you want to remember what was said, yes. We have a recording. <laughs> yeah, very good. Yes. Any question? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Your name is? <laughs> Monica. Monica. Monica, yes. What part of the world are you from? Uh, from Germany. Germany? Uh, yes. Do you have a business or occupation? Yes, I'm a nutrition scientist. Nutrition scientist? Okay. Yes. Yes. Can you can see the next uh, part of the video? Yeah, what was your last question? No, uh, her, her no, question. You, you, she wants to know your last question, you asked her, she didn't understand. Okay. Are you asked me for my question I'm sitting here? Yes. Okay, this I understand now. Yes, I have been yesterday here. So you heard what I had to say? This yes, morning. yes, yes, I understand because I was uh, re- uh, reading your, your books at I home I and um, my teacher in Germany is, yeah. you be his guru. I see. So I come, he said, you go to India, to Aranachula, you have to go to Mumbai, to I see. I see. Ramesh. So I go yeah. and then this is what I can expect that I'm not a doer. Yeah. It, uh, it's for me clear, yeah. I, I have just a feeling I'm doing, but I know I, I I don't do anything. Yes, yes this yes. is. So yesterday, um, I was asking you that I um, I understood you so that you told me I am. I don't know what I am, but I am separate from God. So um, you say you are not God, but God is inside of you. But I don't find any insight. So what do you really mean? I Maybe see, I yeah. don't understand you yeah, right. Sure. 
the university. What is the ego? The ego. What, I, what is, uh, you said you're Monica. Monica, yeah. Who or what is Monica? Monica is just a couple of things. There is no Monica. There is only a... a, a body, 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 mind, object. Yeah, yeah. This, there is a body, mind, object. Yeah, yeah. A body, mind, object and uh, some feelings, some thoughts, some sensations, yeah. nothing so, more. So what happens is, there is one source, one unmanifest source. Yeah. Unmanifest singularity. Yeah. Which has become the duality in manifestation. Yes. And the duality has become the multiplicity. Mm -hmm. The one has become two. Yeah. Yeah. Male and female. Yeah. yeah. And the two and have become many. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So fundamentally, yeah. Ramesh or Monica yeah. are fundamentally only a three dimensional object. Yes, like a movie. Two which. Yes. Through which yeah. the source of God, of consciousness, of energy yeah. functions and brings about whatever is supposed to happen yeah. according to God's will, cosmic law, which by divine hypnosis we are meant to think is our actions. Therefore, Monica and Rame and Regula are egos. Ego being mm -hmm. the source of impersonal consciousness, mm -hmm. identified with each separate entity. Ah yes, and, uh, you th uh, and did I understand it right that you mean um, the source <coughs> express so, themselves through an ego? That is correct. The source expresses itself. Yeah. To each ego yeah, yeah. and brings it to, 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 for something to happen. Anything, good or bad, legal or illegal, yeah. moral or immoral. Yeah, yeah. Anything that happens. Yes, but for me it's a question. Yeah. You, you, you told me that uh, God, uh, God is, you, what your meaning is for God or our meaning, is uh, inside. When it, if he is inside, no, it's inside. I don't know. I find I find no, nothing no, there. It's nothing. No, you can't because if there is something inside an object, yeah. how can the object know if you? Yeah, it's the object. Yeah, if yeah. you put something uh, inside yeah. an object. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you take a piece of wood. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It can't you put be something inside mm. and close it. Yeah. <laughs> how, how can the? the uh, yeah. The, <laughs> See what I mean? Yes. But the fact is that the source of what is connected to you. The source hmm. or impersonal consciousness hmm. has identified itself with each individual body, mind, organism and created by divine hypnosis an ego, me hmm. and the other. So how can I find so, and that therefore, <laughs> each one of us is connected to the soul. Is connected, okay. Is, is but I don't feel. <laughs> is connected to the soul. Yeah. So, if something, I connect something good, and I can put it or push it, uh. but that, that cannot know who the source is. But the fact is that there is a connection. Yes. And the maximum that we can know is to know that I am only a three-dimensional object, incapable of doing anything mm. except what happens through that connection mm -hmm. with the soul. Uh. Therefore it is who acts all the time, mm. the soul, mm. impersonal consciousness, God, energy, whatever you call it, mm. functions all the time. Mm. To all the egos. And do you mean with that um, that I have to, uh, that I, I don't know, I don't accept, uh, and it's right what I understand, this must be the source through the ego accept, or what? Accept. No, to accept. I, I, no, the ego then there has must be to, the ego to, no, no, have to accept. The ego has to accept. The ego. The ego has to, mind you, as far as I'm concerned, until the body is dead, the ego still exists. Yeah. yeah. Even the ego may have enlightenment, 
and the ego may be known as a sage, mm. but it is still the ego yeah. in whom the sense of duality has been removed, mm-hmm. and that ego has become an enlightened ego. But uh, until the body is there, if the ego is there. Mm. The ego may be enlightened, or the ego may not be enlightened. Yes. Uh, but yes. whether the enlightenment has happened or not, uh, the connection is still there. Uh, yes. And my point about this basic, ha- basic happiness that we are talking about, hmm. yeah. all morning, yeah. we are talking about the happiness. Yes, but the ego can do anything. You can do anything. But if you understand that whatever you do, is not your doing, yeah. but a happening brought about by the source, yeah. and you accept that it is not your doing, Okay. then what happens? Then you are not afraid of God. No, I'm not afraid? Hmm. But I don't know what He will do. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yes, yes, I don't know, maybe. Therefore, I, I, therefore if, you, if I accept that whatever I have just done or yeah, I have been yeah. doing, Yeah. So not my doing. Yes, okay. God has been really doing accept. it yes, okay. through me. Then yeah. I don't have to fear God. Yeah, yeah. Therefore, if I don't have to fear God, why? Because whatever I have done, if the society considers a sin and mm. a bad thing, society may punish me. Mm. Society may punish me yeah. and think I have committed a sin mm. according to a religion. Hmm. But when I know that I am incapable of doing anything, hmm. whatever society thinks my doing is really a happening brought about by God, hmm. then I don't have to fear God at all. Hmm. If I'm totally accepted that whatever happens is God's doing. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, okay. I have, it have to think on, I'm too fast in this question. So my yeah. most important hmm. point to you is, if you are able to accept totally, You are incapable of doing anything. Whatever you appear to be doing with the society considers your action is fundamentally a happening brought about by God. Mm-hmm. If you accept that, then you cannot commit a sin. You cannot commit a good deed. You cannot commit a sin. Mm-hmm. If I cannot commit a sin, I don't fear God. Mm-hmm. I would fear God only if I commit a sin. Hmm. Religion tells me if I do this, it's a sin and God will punish me. But I accept, hmm. I don't accept what the religion tells me. I accept whatever happens to me is God's will. Therefore, I cannot commit a sin. I'm not afraid of my conscience. I'm not afraid of God. Therefore, nothing has stopped me from loving God as my Creator. Hmm. He does whatever He wants. Hmm. Society may think it is good or bad. Hmm. Punish me or reward me. Hmm. Punishment means pain. Reward means pleasure. Hmm. According to the rule of the game of life, I have to accept it. Hmm. So uh, an action happens. Whether the society considers a good action or a bad action, mm. I know that it is a happening brought about by God. Therefore, if it is a good action, society rewards me, I am not proud. On the other hand, if the society punishes me, mm. I don't think it is a sin or a bad action, it is God's action. Mm. But living my life in the society, mm. By the rules of the game of life, I have yeah. to accept what the society does. Mm. Therefore, next moment may be pleasure or pain. Mm. If there is pleasure, I enjoy it. If there is pain, I suffer it. But deep down I know that it is not my deed. Mm. It is God brought them to me. Therefore, I cannot commit a sin. Mm. I don't have to lose sleep over having committed so many sins during the day. Therefore, the connection is always there, mm. and there is unhappiness. I'm not at ease with myself. 
I'm not comfortable with myself. Only when the connection is broken. Yeah. And the connection is broken. Every time I think I have done something uh. or the other has done something. Then the connection is broken and that doesn't happen. Hmm. But if I am able to accept totally all the time, nobody has done anything, is capable of doing anything. My connection with the source is never broken. And that to me is enlightenment. I don't condemn myself for anything, I don't condemn the other for anything. But what is this, um, the connection? What do you really mean, this connection? Because it means for me there must be one and another. But I don't know this other thing, so... No, no. But that... Connection is... The, the connection yeah. is an invisible hypnotic suggestion. That's what it means. No, there is no actual connection. Actually, there is, there is no ego. No ego. There is truly no ego. Truly no Monica. But what is... Uh, okay. And Monica is the divine hypnosis which has been created. I am Monica. Uh, okay. Hmm. So in that hypnotic suggestion that you are Monica, the connection is there. Ah, uh, oh, oh! The connection... Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> the connection is not a uh. material connection. Mm. The mm. connection is not a material connection. Yes. Mm. It's okay. Yeah. You Monica... Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Man kann nicht sehen. Yeah, yeah. Monica doesn't exist. Mm. It's just as a thought. As a thought, yes. And in that thought, mm. Monica, the basis of Monica is the connection with it. Mm. So if you are able to accept totally you are not the doer, the other is not the doer. Mm. Yes. Therefore you don't condemn yourself, you don't condemn the other. Mm. You don't carry the load of guilt and shame for your action. Mm. You don't carry the load of hatred for the other. Mm. That means your connection with the source is never broken mm. and you are always at ease. But it's just not with me. Irrespective, <laughs> irrespective <laughs> of whether there is pleasure or pain. Uh, and so you, all that you have to do is to wait until there is a total acceptance. Uh, and every moment, whatever happens. <laughs> whatever happens, mm -hmm. constant understanding. Nobody is doing anything. Therefore, my concept of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. What is my concept of enlightenment? Everything in the world is happening according to God's will or cosmic law. How each happening affects whom? If hell hurts me and helps you, or hurts you and helps her, is again according to God's will, cosmic law. Hmm. To which person the happening has happened? Will the society considers your action and my action, or her action and his action, is also according to God's will, cosmic law. Hmm. The human being is incapable of doing anything. Hmm. Everything is happening according to God's will. Hmm. Therefore, I cannot take pride in anything that I have done. I cannot hate anybody for what he has done. Yeah, but then always if the, if the concept is thinking really true, the, this body-mind, yes. yes. That, Before it's only a thought, oh yes, a good concept, yes. but it must think in the cells, I don't know to say, yes. Other, yes? so really inside. That's yeah. a very good point. Therefore, the ultimate question Monica has, the ultimate question that Monica has is, what do I have to do? <laughs> in order to accept totally, mm -hmm. yes, but I don't not, can not, not by mind, mm -hmm. but more with my yes, heart. Yes, my heart, yes. That I'm not the doer. Mm. What do I have to do in order to have the total acceptance that I'm not the doer? Yeah. What do I have to do? Yes. What's the answer, Monica? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You are right. Mm. Nothing. I can do nothing mm. to make my acceptance total. Mm. What does that mean? Mm. It means it will happen 
only if it is supposed to happen. Oh yes. <laughs> according to God's will of cosmic law. Yeah. <laughs> You see what I mean? Yes. Not in your control, not your yes, responsibility. Yes, freedom. This is freedom. <laughs> not your responsibility, it's freedom. Yes, this is freedom. Not your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. But the question, valid question arises. Hmm. While I am waiting for God to make up His mind, <laughs> like my three and a half year old grandniece said, hmm. what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for that I have a suggestion. <laughs> what you can do is what I call personal investigation. Mm. Have you read Ramana Maharshi? Yes. What does Ramana in identical situation, in these circumstances, what do I have to do? <laughs> Ramana Maharshi says, personal inquiry. Mm. Find out who am I? Yeah. My suggestion is what I call personal investigation of a particular action. Mm. Mm. It is done by you, mm. but with the total understanding yeah. that whatever has happened has already happened. Mm. Whether you are going to be enlightened or not has already been decided. With that understanding you do this practice, what I call personal investigation. Very simple. If you mm. can do it during the day, you are welcome to do it any time. Yes. <laughs> but if you are busy throughout the day, then at the end of the day, mm. take ten minutes off, mm -hmm. sit quietly, think of the various events during the day, and you will, you will know that the event just happened. Nobody was really doing anything. Things were just happening. Mm. From those happenings, choose one action. Which Monica is sure is Monica's action. Other actions I don't know, but this one is my action. And I challenge anybody to prove to me that it is not my action. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. And then you investigate that action. Uh. <laughs> Very simple. Yeah, yeah. Very simple. Yeah. If I consider this as my action, mm. did I decide to do that action yeah. at any time? Mm. Yes, so now I understand. This is... I if can't it, explain, but... If I yeah, can yeah. explain, mm. if I can... if I can feel that, that it is my action, then all I have to do is to ask myself, did I decide to do that action at any time? <laughs> That in the, then you say, no, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Then the investigation begins. Uh -huh. If I did not decide to do that action myself, <laughs> how did that action happen? Mm. That is the investigation. And then you realize that a thought, a thought had happened. Mm. And that thought had led to the action. Yeah. If the thought had not happened, your action would not have happened. Yeah, yeah. And you have no control at all over Stop. the thought. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because nobody has any control mm. over what the next thought is going to be. <coughs> if the thought had not happened, my action would not have happened. And I have no control over the thought. How can I call it my action? Mm. And when you have done this investigation yourself, then your acceptance must go considerably yeah. deeper, mm. from the mind to the heart. Mm. Then you take another action and another action. Mm. And you may investigate any number of actions. Mm. And I assure you, at the end of every action, you will come to the conclusion, not my action, not my action. <laughs> and at some point of time, depending on your destiny, God's will, cosmic law, a divine flash of total acceptance is likely to happen. I simply cannot be the doer. Mm. If I had not happened to be at a certain place and time, Mm -hmm. and happen to see something, mm -hmm. my action would not have happened. But I have no control over being at that place at that time, and much more important, for something to happen which I happen to see, or hear, or smell, or taste, or touch, my action would not have happened. <laughs> so each time it goes deeper and deeper mm -hmm. and deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as it goes deeper and deeper, your own understanding will also go deeper and deeper. All the time you will also know mm. 
I'm not the doer. I'm not the doer. I'm not the doer. Going deep. Yeah, deep. Ah, yes. So this, mm, it needs it time. It is happening. Yeah. All you have to do is this apparent investigation. Yeah. Ramanu Maharshi called personal inquiry. I call it my personal investigation of a particular action. Hmm. And whether it is your action or not. Mm-hmm. And the answer, question is only one. Did I decide to do that action at any time? Oh. And then you decide, no. Either a thought happened, or I happened to see something, or hear something. Hmm. And you have no control over being at that time, at that place. Yeah. Nor did you have any control over the thought. Hmm. And each time, not my action, not my action, not my action, go deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm. So, is there any more questions? Just, just now, when I'm sitting here, go on, go on, you yeah. said all you have to do, just now you said, all you have to do is that apparent investigation. Why you say apparent? <coughs> what you mean? Apparent because, how can a three-dimensional object do any of <laughs> And so you do the investigation yourself. And, and one more thing I forgot. When you do sit for the investigation, at the end of the day you take ten minutes up and sit for the investigation. I forgot to tell you one thing. This is not a yogic discipline. You don't have to sit on a hard seat with your back straight. Take the most comfortable seat. <laughs> and in order to be comfortable, if you like your glass of sherry, have it. <laughs> no, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but be comfortable. Yeah. And then do and then do this investigation. Mm-hmm. That's meditation. That's <laughs> it. Not, no? that, not that you are compelled to do it then. Uh-huh. <laughs> you just do it because you want to do it. Mm-hmm. That is why you take compulsion and have your sherry. Mm-hmm. So this is not a discipline. Mm-hmm. And therefore, as this understanding goes deeper, the understanding itself will start working. Mm-hmm. And another important thing I want to tell you, mm-hmm. you cannot use this understanding as an instrument to get the acceptance deeper. Mm-hmm. The understanding will work, by, and that is the beauty of it. And do you do you mean this that um, I have to do it every every evening? No, there again. No. Only when you feel like it. Okay. Now well, maybe I like to have it every day. Um. Only when you feel like it. Mm-hmm. You can do it for ten minutes, mm-hmm. one action, or sit for half an hour mm-hmm. and do three or four actions. Mm-hmm. But every single time. Mm-hmm. You keep on coming to the country mm-hmm. after your own investigation, not my action, not my action. Mm-hmm. And each time the understanding will go deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. Okay, Monica. Okay, thank you. So if any questions arise, you are welcome to come again. Yeah. गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः नमो आदि रूपा ओंकार स्वरूपा विश्वाचिया रूपा माय बापा तुझी आसक्तीने तुझे गुण गाऊ तेने सुखी राहू सर्व काळा तूची श्रोता तूची वक्ता 
ज्ञानासे अंजना सर्व होने जाने तुझा हाती तुका म्हणे येथे नाही मी तू पणा स्तवावे ते कवणा कवणा लागी नमो आदिरूपा ओंकार स्वरूपा विश्वाची आरूपा माय बापा ओंकार स्वरूपा सद्गुरु समर्था ओंकार स्वरूपा सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांच्या नाथा तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो ओंकार स्वरूपा सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांच्या नाथा तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो नमो माय बापा गुरु कृपा घना तोडिया बंधना माया मोहा नमो माय बापा गुरु कृपा घना तोडिया बंधना माया मोहा मोह जाय माझे कोण निरशील तुझ वीण दयाळा सद्गुरु राया तुझ वीण दयाळा सद्गुरु राया तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो ओंकार स्वरूपा सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांच्या नाथा तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो सद्गुरु राया माझा आनंद सागर त्रैलोक आधार गुरु राव त्रैलोक आधार गुरु राव त्रैलोक्य आधार गुरु राव गुरु राज स्वामी असे स्वयं प्रकाश ज्या पुढे उदास चंद्र रवी त्या पुढे उदास चंद्र रवी या पुढे उदास चंद्र रवी रवी शशी अग्नी मेन तिच्या रूपा स्वप्रकाश रूपा मेने वेद स्वप्रकाश रूपा मेने वेद स्वप्रकाश रूपा तुझ नमो तुझ नमो ओंकार स्वरूपा सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांच्या नाथा तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो तुझ नमो एका जनार्दनी गुरु पर ब्रह्मा एका जनार्दनी गुरु पर ब्रह्मा तयाचे पैनाम सदा मुखी तयाचे पैनाम सदा मुखी तयाचे पैनाम सदा मुखी ओंकार स्वरूपा सद्गुरु समर्था अनाथांच्या नाथा 
सगुण मनो कि निर्गुण रे तुज सगुण मनो कि निर्गुण रे सगुण निर्गुण एक गोविंदु रे एक गोविंदु रे तुज सगुण मनो कि निर्गुण रे तुज सगुण मनो कि निर्गुण रे अनुमाने ना अनुमाने ना श्रुति ने तिने ती भरते गोविंद रे श्रुति ने तिने ती भरते गोविंद रे तुज सगुण मनो कि निर्गुण रे तुज सगुण मनो कि निर्गुण रे दृश्य मनो कि अदृश्य रे तुजा दृश्य मनो कि अदृश्य रे देहधारी जो जो त्याचे निहित नित्य कर्म सदाचार सन्मार्गाचा आगरा न धर्म देहधारी जो जो त्याचे विहित नित्यावडे ते हाती घडे नित्य कर्म देह प्रपंचाचा दास सुखे करो काम सुखे करो काम तुझे रूप चित्ती राहो मुखी तुझे नाम तुझा कदी वाहिला मी देह भाव सारा पुढे अंतराळी आत्मा सोडुनी प्रसारा तुझ्या पदी वाहिला मी देह भाव सारा पुढे अंतराळी आत्मा सोडुनी प्रसारा नाम तुझे घेतो गोरा नाम तुझे घेतो गोरा होऊनी निष्काम नाम तुझे घेतो गोरा होऊनी निष्काम देह प्रपंचाचा दास सुखे करो काम सुखे करो काम तुझे रूप चित्ती राहो मुखी तुझे नाम तुझे रूप चित्ती राहो मुखी तुझे नाम पांडुरंग 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 थँक्यू थँक्यू